I really don't like this idea that people gatekeep being able to be a minimalist as something that is a privilege for the rich. Hey there my handsome and pretty little cobras and welcome back to the cobra's nest for those of you here new my name is Mignon Cobra and I make minimalism videos. Today's video is going to be a really special one and today's video is going to be minimalism for the bro. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. Let's get it, let's go. Woo. If you haven't done so yet, please check out my Patreon and become a Patreon and help support my channel grow. I will start posting content there for anybody who wishes to join. Any small donation is greatly appreciated. And for the algorithm, if you want to make the Cobra's Nest grow and have a lot of serpents inside, <laughs> hit the subscribe button and the like button and it will definitely help out the algorithm. This video is super near to my heart because I have actually been broke my entire life. I don't think that many people other than people who personally know me know that. I have always had no money to my name. I've always had student loans since I started university. So I've always been in the red and it isn't until I finished paying off my student debt that I finally have some money to my name. And I mean, obviously I have stocks, but I bought that with my tuition. So today's video is going to be minimalism for the broke. I know there's a lot of articles out there online where people are like, Minimalism is for rich people. Broke people can't afford minimalism. I'm here to tell you no. Minimalism is the best thing that ever happened to me and I'm going to be talking about ways to implement minimalism if you are broke. So without further ado, let's just get into the list. Let's get it. Let's go. Woo. Number one, embrace that less is abundance. This one is a total mind flip. I know that it might be difficult to understand that, especially if you grew up with very little. Although I have I've read some people said that when they were poor they grew up with a lot of clutter so take this as you will it is until you experience it that you realize what it's like all of the things that you have actually hold you back and hold you down i know that's like oh you're just you're coming from a privileged place um no so i'm the type of poor that grew up with very little and no money i remember my friends used to come over to my family's apartment and the room would echo because there was only a couch in the living room and they'd be like wow you guys must be so rich it's pretty funny that if you own so little people start to mistaking you for rich so maybe Maybe there is something to this myth that owning very little is a rich privilege but I'm here to tell you that less is abundance. There's a Zen principle out there that is about the idea that the things that you own you, the more attached you are to material things, the more trapped you are and the more owned you are by your things. So actually if you can let go of your attachment to abundance, you actually start to become woke to other aspects of life and you start to see the true abundance of things that really matter. For example, your relationship with people, your health, your spirituality, your mental well-being, being. These are the abundances that don't really exist in material possessions. As I say it aloud, it sounds very religious. I know that like Jesus said things like that, like your treasures are in his kingdom. I'm not religious by any means, even though I'm Catholic. But what I'm trying to say is the abundance that you seek, you won't find it in material possessions. You'll keep accumulating and accumulating clutter and you're still going to have a void inside. So you're just better off addressing the void by filling it with things that will make you feel abundant, which are non-material, than to keep filling it in with material stuff. And you'll start to realize that less is actually abundance. Number two, don't be lured in by sales. So this was a practical tip. When I used to be broke as hell, I didn't have a lot of money. So of course I was going to be frugal and I was going to be money savvy and I was going to go for sales. But let me tell you, as somebody who now doesn't shop from the sales section and I buy things full price, but I don't buy a lot, I will tell you there is a reason these things have gone on sale. Like I'm giving you a heart to heart. Of course you want to be smart too. Like as a general rule, I'm very wary of sales. Sales tend to be only a slight discount or if there's a massive discount, there's a reason for it. I'll use makeup as an example. Sometimes I would buy makeup and only to find that it was close to expiration date. Things that are on sale are things the company is trying to rid itself of. You're essentially paying more for people's garbage. So if you're embracing minimalism, you might feel more inclined to buy less and to not be lured in by sales because we're lured into sales. And so we buy this and we feel like, oh, that was so cheap. I'm going to go to somewhere else and spend a little money there because I saved $5 off of that sale. And it just becomes this like bad cycle of accumulating clutter of a bunch of mediocre things that you didn't really want anyway like let's be real here like how many things have you chucked that you were like yeah honestly i just bought it because it was on sale so my remedy for that is would you buy it full price anytime you come across a sweet deal ask yourself if you were to pay full price would you still buy it at full price and that will give you your answer as to whether it's a sweet deal or not don't bring clutter into your house under the guise of i got it on sale you're not doing yourself any favors number three don't be afraid of the just in case i always see this in the minimalism forums on reddit a lot of people are like i can't let go of this i can't let go of that because of just in case. I, I had read a lot of articles saying that poor people have to carry around an umbrella because unlike rich people, they can't go into the store and buy another umbrella. They got to carry around their mug because they can't buy water at the store. They got to bring their own food because they can't afford to eat out. Like those are not the examples of the just in case items that people like to use as their argument. The just in case item are items that you haven't used in like a year or two and you feel like I'm going to need it just in case. Those just in case 
are never gonna come and if they do you always end up using the same logic of reason that you have right now that you would have even without the item so i'll use myself as an example when i lived in china um there was a lot of things that i feared to let go of because i had this idea that you know just in case i need it later and i'm safe to say all the things that i let go of very very little did i ever need them and the just in case never came up and the times that just in case came up i just went and asked a friend could i borrow this or could i borrow that or i was pretty creative and i used some other tool to s suit the need of things that i needed i felt in the end when i reflected back on it i realized that all of the clutter that i was keeping never ended up serving me anyway and the times that i did need something to serve me something else did the trick obviously do not just listen to some idiot on the internet telling you what to do be reasonable think it through you know what to do this is minimalism for the broke not minimalism for the stupid so be practical with these things but if you have certain items that you already know you're kind of like oh i'm only really keeping this because of just in case if you're really unsure you can do the whole put it in a box for a month and then see if you ever really need it number four share items with family and friends when i was broke it meant i didn't have a lot of money it didn't mean i didn't have family and friends to be fair though when i moved to china i didn't have much family or friends so i too can also talk about for not having family and friends but i'm just gonna go with the general population and assume that most people watching this have family and have friends if anyway let me get into it share item with family and friends i know that maybe some of you might feel like you're being a leech but if they're your family and they're your friends they really don't mind borrowing something from you of course you want to return it back in good condition i started to use this hack when i was kind of into a certain phase of dressing very hype wear but i didn't want to drop a pretty penny on it and i had a friend who was really into hype wearing clothes but he kind of had like a shopping trigger type of finger he would buy a lot of hype clothes that he just didn't feel interested anymore just be sitting around in his apartment so i asked if i could like borrow or rent it and i would wear his clothes clothes for a while to get that hype feeling and then I would return it to him and there were times where he'd be like hey I have this don't you want to borrow this too I think it'll match the outfit and it's a back and forth too like there were things he needed we'd also lend him he liked kitchen stuff so if we had a kitchen thing that he needed we'd lend that to him and vice versa so it's just kind of like a back and forth of sharing and by no means I'm saying keep it like I understand like when I was broke there were times where I felt like maybe if I borrow it long enough you'll forget about it but don't do that that's that's incorrect that's, you can share things with family and friends and they can share it with you and just use it for a certain period of time those are the good cases to use for those just in case moments when you needed stuff well that's where your family and friends can come into handy all right number five no words and no branding for a classy look so i would like look online and watch videos and tutorials on youtube these are i guess for women but i think it applies for men too actually it does apply to men too i've been watching a lot of ma male minimalists apply these principles too but the idea essentially is if you want to look classy for a budget don't put logos on the front of your shirt that is the quickest way to cheapen yourself and it's funny because some of these logo branded stuff looks really expensive but all the rationale that happens happens behind it is although you may think you know what like i'm looking fly as f rocking this logo what it just tells other people is you don't got a brain and you have no self-esteem and you need to rep your self-esteem by going out and purchasing your self-esteem in the store and wearing a giant logo on your shirt saying look at me i have no self-esteem that is all that happens when you wear a branded shirt like, it's funny some brands i think you look a hella stupid wearing there's other brands that i coveted and there's no difference it's just the alphabet on your shirt so like i know i'm dishing some tough love and i know a lot of people are gonna come for me and gonna be like oh it's that's not the case i actually have a lot of confidence and that's why i rock branded stuff you say that when you're young and i too made this mistake i have branded stuff too i have bought abercrombie and finch i have bought um lululemon tna i bought all of these things i'm not here sitting telling you that i didn't rock these things because i totally did but what i'm trying to tell you is once you start wearing clothes that don't have brands on them all you're gonna do is look classy as f so what does this have to do for minimalism for the broke so there's a lot of pieces that you can go out and buy that are actually a lot more affordable than paying for these branded things which are just that much more expensive because you're paying for the brand so you want to go buy clothes that don't have logo on them think you can go thrifting to get things like that you could stitch out the logo which is what i did i re-upcycled some of my clothes and took off the branding you can go to h&m you can go to muji you can go to uniqlo all of these places have things where it's like the basic set and they don't have anything written on it or if they do it's like on the inside of the tag and you're gonna look phenomenal like you guys can see that i'm wearing a shirt that doesn't have anything written on it and how professional do i look but this is just a basic gray blouse from uniqlo and I look really good. But no one's thinking, oh, she looks poor. There's no logos on it. But people might think you look poor with branded stuff on you. And number six, find that good balance between quality and the price. I know that right now, if you're watching this, or at least if you're in a situation where you're broke and you're considering like, how do I implement minimalism into my life? I think a really good tip that I picked up from reading The Life-Changing Magic of Thinking Big, he said that people are like, how can I dress well? He said, buy twice as good and twice as less. So you have to find that sweet balance of what works for you between like how much 
good quality stuff can you buy without sacrificing like how little you can have i'm not saying only own one item and it costs you an arm and a leg but i'm not buying a bunch of small trinkety stuff and being able to buy a certain amount of quality goods like if you're in a position where you can buy maybe like only maybe one or two good pieces in exchange for maybe buying four or five not as good pieces and i think that that would really help you along in your minimalism journey where you don't have to feel like oh i'm being broke and that's what's holding me back from being able to be a minimalist i don't think that's how it should be i really don't like this idea that people gatekeep being being able to be a minimalist as something that is a privilege for the rich i think that minimalism was one of the best things that ever happened to me i ended up going in the reverse i ended up having more wealth than i ever have in the past because i implemented minimalism when i worked i'd save my money and i bought a few quality items that made me look good and made me feel comfortable and i didn't spend i actually ended up saving a lot of money long term over only buying a few solid pieces that would last me over the years than how much i used to actually spend when i would buy constantly have to buy and replace items but this was just something that happened unintentionally when i became a minimalist i decided i wanted to be more frugal and i wanted to be better with my money and one of the byproducts of that was that my cool my clothes and my things ended up lasting me longer because I just ended up I decided to buy a little bit better quality than as opposed to when I used to be broke and I was constantly buying like low grade stuff that would just like get wasted in the wash in the end finding that sweet balance for myself is one that ended up really supporting me in my financial journey okay so we have reached the end of the video and I'll see you guys in the next one bye